distinguished members in the audience and on the, of the dais. When I got a mail from <coughs> Mr. Niraj, I wondered uh, how he picked me up uh, to do this job. Because at the DGCSIR, I have come to this room n number of times uh, to do inaugural, and it's very boring to tell, and I have done that job so much in FIKI, CII, all this. Uh, I thought, post-retirement, I am an entrepreneur. So maybe that's the reason he has called me. So then I sat down and <coughs> looked at what is that when I did the first, when I became DGCSR, I had an interview in Telegraph. Will you change this? Oh, sorry. <coughs> he asked me, when you was your first innovation you did? So I said 50 years back. I recall when I was 16, and there was no Xerox, which my daughter never believed that there was no Xerox machine. And I was a voracious man, so I had to buy every possible book I wanted to buy. But I come from a lower middle class family, where is the money? Since I sold all maths books, so I started writing down answers to all the question papers that comes out in the month of December for people to prepare for the board those who want to get 40 marks. And I go to a press, four rupees for bigger one and two rupees for the half page. And I, I made a huge amount of money. Those days, several hundred rupees per week. And so that I can buy all the books. So I thought he read this story, and that's why I'm called here. <clears throat> Since I retired, I decided... <clears throat> There's one DGCSIR former, Dr. Marshelker. He's working with large industries uh, all the time, advising them from Kuru Khetra to everything. I thought I will just spend time with the younger people so that I look at the mentors. So today, I went a uh, couple of startups. So one advice I got from Vijay Kelkar that don't get into putting your money and don't yourself start a company and don't get into legal fiduciary responsibility at this age. So I decided that all these startups, however ideas I have, I have to find some young people and what they are driven, those who are interested and stay below 8% uh, knowledge equity because 10% I understand it becomes a legal advice. So some of these companies which I mentor and some of these industries, especially uh, Jiva, Ayurveda, I believe it has a great future, and what is the preventive medicine, that's what my interest is. So innovation is conventionally believed, novelty, non-obviousness leads to a patent and a publication, when that is converted into business processes is invention. Today, innovation is a process of integrated thinking and connecting the dot, you can refer to this paper we published. But today I'll show you two, because uh, Niraj wanted me to talk on open source drug discovery. You know, the Tagore's poem says, talking about the past, if the present passes away, I'll keep it in my heart and not talk about it. So, but I, since he insisted, so I thought I'll show this case study. So idea is, the message is, you need to dream of disruptive innovation. We make Ola after Uber. We make Flipkart after Amazon. When do we make something that world hasn't made? And that's, I thought, should be the challenge. And that's the challenge young innovators need to get. So, I believe this is the strongest killer of dreams, what others will say if I fail. And we cannot fail, because we are good students. We have to be good. So, this is where the most important message, that how do you do innovation in a space that you are unique and others cannot compete. 
So, they, so how did I come into open source drug discovery? I was holding patents and commercialized the first software in India, bioinformatics, we developed with TCS, we do biosuit. We, so in the process, the idea was, can we do computational modeling and get new drug targets? When those patented things I took to Pfizer's, to Bestel Mesquip, everybody, everybody said we are not interested because it was on TB and because TB has no market. So I looked at it. The drug discovery cost has reached about $2 billion now. If you have a strong IP, increases availability. If you have strong IP, it decreases affordability. So what do we do? Discovery to be cheaper need to be open innovation, shared wisdom. Personal genome sequencing was available at $300 million a piece. By 2006, it became $1 million, and 2007, all Hollywood people will have their genome done, and they can tell it at a party, you got your genome? I have my genome done, you know? So it became an ornament. But today, you and I get genome sequencing, and this is available. Available in Delhi, in my Institute of Genomics, which I established, as well as the startup I work at the Theomics at, uh, and several others in the Bangalore and other parts. So the idea is it has reached the common mass. So the genome sequencing cost fell down where the drug discovery went up. It's a dichotomy. <coughs> Barnard Muno in his article showed that 87% of the late stage failure are due to poor efficacy and safety. So can I, why do we do that? FDA needs only two phase three, phase three clinical trials. Why are we running the drugs 111, 83, 72 clinical trials? The reason is, if you take the clinical trial out, your market share goes down. As many molecules you are running in the clinical trial, your valuation goes up for the company. But at the cost of whose? You and me. So in the process, Bernard Bonos it says, can we build a, why it has happened? Because Breakthrough science needs investment, patent, new product. Investment goes back to the return to the market, increase R&D involvement. This is the conventional circle. But the lack of market incentive, neglected disease, nobody bothers. So TB still, you use 50 years old drugs is today. 1963, last drug. Subsequently, when we started open source drug discovery, the bed like we didn't came. So, at the end of today, 1,000 Indians will die, as many more than the cancer, and 4,000 worldwide. So that this prompted me to think that we need to innovate something disruptively different, and how do we go about it? So the idea is, engineers have designed aircrafts to start with from Wright Brothers era, from trial and error to 777, or 380, which is completely computerized elements and before flown in computer, designed in computer, crashed in computer before manufacturing takes place. Why are we in drug discovery in the Wright Brothers era? Trial and error, trial and error, and fail. Can we not digitize and create a human and then check the blood pressure in the computer, add some salt to see increase, add some medicine to decrease? I realized it will be possible, but by the time it may take 30 or 40 years, and I may not be alive to see the result. Because it is 23,000 genes, the network is too complex. So the idea was, can we take a smaller organism, TB, which is 4,000 genes, and build in computer? And I'm very proud to say it was a 10 years back idea which was, I gave a talk in England, the idea in September 2007, and it was picked up by Wall Street, and that we are talking about open source model for drug discovery, which is so, you know, different. And everybody criticized me, except I got a mail from William Hasseltine, the Harvard professor, which is the richest scientist in the world, who made money out of genomics, billions of dollars, 
he wrote about, I read an article today's been regarding virtual drug discovery. What a great idea. So I knew if Bill is, thinks it's a good idea, it, I don't care what others say. So the first advice to my young people, don't care what others say. If you want to pursue a dream, follow it. Make sure that your niche is very, very clear. So the concept of open source drug discovery is nothing but pharma for Linux for pharma. If Linux, you remember, the big supercomputer giants will fight, Cray, IBM, proprietary software. Today, 95% of the supercomputer run on Linux. Linux is open source, but made business. It is the collective wisdom that Linux got created. So today, Pfizer, Bristol Myers Group, everybody is competing. I guarantee you, if they talk to the CEOs of today's computer companies, they will realize that there is an open source is the future. So basically, a global platform to bring the best minds, and this is an idea, in September 2007, by 2013, we had over 8,000 scientists, researchers participating from 130 countries. So, 2012 by itself, within five years, the Nesta UK report showed that open source drug discovery is the most frugal innovation in the most, it is called relative decrease in the cost production and relative innovation process. You know, even Nano was here and OSTT was here. So it is this that says, what is the differently we did? Open innovation embodies the notion that in the new economy marketplace, complete thing will disrupt. And even intellectual property. And that should be understood. Now what it does, crowdsourcing, you go beyond the boundaries. You can go around, there's a Canadian company, which was, can I get water? A Canadian mining, gold mine company could not get any more gold. So they decided to give this entire information of their geological information in public domain. Hundreds of engineers and all put them on. Where is my gold in these maps? Today they have 27% CGR. So it is crowdsourcing. So crowdsourcing is a new mantra. Now why we had to do this? The idea is that you can't create a new institution. And can we pimp all the, can I just please move? Provide a global unconventional virtual collaborative platform for new drug discovery. And to do this, everybody said it will not work. They're all in print. You can go Google and say, People, you know, sell that will not work. Dan Bucks' chip said it will not work because the students don't know. Because to build a computational model of TB, we had to read 45,000 publications. Every information in literature had to be brought in and put them together. So we engage college, school, student, college, university students to read these papers and connect all the information in a portal. We use Google Doc for annotation and discussion. There are 4,000 genes, their functions, their actions. Everything was put into form literature. And <clears throat> we used community-operated two-channel, microblogs, online th thematic discussion groups, and 600 Skypes by me, and <clears throat> students coming in. Of course, I was DGCSIR, so there was possibility to bring people together. And eventually, we got all experimental studies buried in the literature and all this to put together to generate all the information and this. 2010, we brought 120 top participants to Delhi and we had a jamboree. And you can see this was the international press's reaction. That is 300 man years into a few months by these young people. And this situation brought a human network of students 
And you can see from the universities, like even Amity Institute, not the IITs, participated. Average good students, but committed. Parents started calling us, what are you doing that my son or daughter has never worked and hard so hard, and I don't ask them to 3 o'clock to go and sleep? That's the power of the youth. And that's the difference between IT and pharma. Pharma, IT is all this happened, whether Twitter, Facebook, this is below 25. In pharma, below 25 people will only do technician's job with coded things. Only 35 and gray hair people are the one. So therefore, pharma has no innovation. Pharma has lost in innovation because it could not exploit the youth. So I just traced back five years down the road, where are these kids? They came from small colleges. Today you can see they are, of which a very large number are in PhD and industry. Every one of them are skilled and blessed. Where have they gone? They have spread OSDD across the world. So that's the power of the youth. So when this happened, 2011, chemistry guys came, hey, we want to also contribute and make molecules instead of doing boring practicals. So 100 teachers, thousands of students created the biggest library that you can create with undergraduate students and postgraduate students instead of practicals that you do from the past, your seniors to seniors to seniors, and you know, you copy the notebook and to look it a little old, you put an idea in chamber, so it looks very old that you have right written, but actually you wrote previous day of your exam. We wanted to create an open source software, which will be allow us to millions of molecules to screen. And we brought several, three Bhatnagar awardees together, and you know, it's the biggest challenge to be very talented scientists, we brought them together, and that's what you know, I, I was very proud of. And we built this, and this is the just to give an idea, it has one lakh heat per day. One lakh heat. The servers with CRTD, you can see, go there and see the service. So we decided to screen 57 million molecules with all the targets of TB. And we used thousands of students and then built it up. And then by the time it just retired, then I asked why. Then I sat down and started analyzing them. So we created a virtual network of institutions which is as big as like Pfizer. So what happened? A large number of mine across the world from you know, fellow of the Royal Society, Professor Tom Blundell, and all believers in proprietary knowledge, everybody came in whose thought realized that open source is the future. Science Magazine brought out to say crowdsourcing drug discovery, a big phenomena, and this. What is interesting, so where are we today? Ten years down the road, an in silico model, first time in the world for an organism is built in computer. You can knock out, you can do in computer and see what the targets are, what will happen to the reaction to the bug. We have been able to find six repurposed drugs for repurposing, one of them is metformin, the type 2 diabetes drug, which has just gone into clinical trial in ICMR now. It is all published. We have given all this data open source, and uh, all the targets have appeared in Nature Scientific Report. And this week, or in a few days, it's accepted. All these drug molecules, new leads, are also being published. OSDD has gone global. Uh, <clears throat> under the United Nations, Energetic Action TB 2030 has become a target. Intellectual Property Act of 2016 says OSDD as a model to be followed. Open Source Pharma Foundation has been just established in Bangalore with Tata Trust funding. And Government of India has established a TB Research Consortium. So what was a dream, impossible, 10 years down the road, it's a reality. And I think I have done my job. So if you look at Bill Gates, a pro we, I approached him in 2007 through Michelle to get some funding. He said it will not work. In 2017, 
16, he has wrote an open source collaboration between scientists could be a drug discovery catalyst. And of course, Dr. Marshalka, in this characteristic way, he says that pioneer, what Bill Gates is saying today, indicates our limit. So therefore, what had happened? Now we have a book. <clears throat> we do things differently by Mark Stevenson, and he has written a full chapter of 32 pages on the story on open source drug discovery and my lab. Now this happened in 2015, so I was very pleased because this is happening not I'm a DGCSIR, because I'm running this program, and this year we completed this project from building this in silico uh, model, and it's open to the world, anybody can use it. But what I just wanted to tell a few minutes now, last case study, is that need to be always in the frontiers of science to lead and not to follow. So I thought, can we tell you, young people, a product, because up to 2015, middle, I could not work with industry, because I was the Secretary of Government of India, you have a bar. So my two years, I was actually called the CEO to know when really we got the idea. I said, if I tell these kids, nobody will believe me, so let me give little more time. Two and a half years, we got an idea. That idea, we converted into a product, and a student of mine who is industry sponsor, uh, I tell this because 2006, this boy came to work with me, Harpit Singh, but I told him, you know, you come from a business family, go and make some money. PhD fellowship is too little. 2012, he came back, 2013, and said, I have made money, I have a Mercedes I drive, my wife drives Audi, now can I still do a PhD with you? I said, why? He said, I want to recruit PhDs. So I told him, okay, 2013, we do coursework under the Academy of CSR, which I established, and <clears throat> no problem. But 14 onwards, I'll guide you. So 15, when, but every work must come out as a company or a product or a spin-off. So why? Because I realized the 21st century is the IoT of data analytics. And the future of health is going to be big different. All of us, you know, I showed this slide in 2010 I wrote this slide in 2011 that this will be future. How many of you have a Fitbit in your hand? Several, right? But this was 2011. And today I'm telling you there will be electronic tattoos, there will be smart lens kits, there will be socks. Your entire thing will be digitized. But who will analyze? How do you integrate? And therefore, first thing I decided what will happen to my rural India? Do I know what the words are? So we created a container box and converted it into a digital space. And as a DGCSR, I could implement three of them. And Dr. Anurag Agarwal was very pleased to take it forward. And we published this in 2013. And so you see, this collects data, the data comes to Delhi, it across, and it's in the digital surface. You know the, so now today, 53 of them with the HP has taken it forward to collect digital data of the rural India. What's our challenge? Our challenge is we build children, children have no records, we don't have data, and the children die. Today, Modi is talking about it. So this is 2015, the first thing we thought of, that can we create a digital platform where every child born in this country can be captured, and can it be very affordable. So ICHR Cloud is the first of its kind in the world, in India, and where we have put predictive, preventive, participatory, and personalized medicine, all the child's personal records, and this has been taken. The uniqueness and the benefit for parents and benefit for doctors, the reason is, once it is digitized, you can then take policy decisions. So this product was made, and then we realize, if you look at INICU, that is the premature children. Actually, my student 
uh, had a premature child. So then he was motivated, and his wife, and his wife is a brilliant software engineer. So I <coughs> told them that Oxygen should form a company, Oxygen Medical, and Oxygen Medical should spin off. So <coughs> this is the second spin off, ICQ Medical, just to give you a data 27.6 million children are born, 3.5 million has a preterm birth, 780,000 dies within one year, and 1.3 million dies by five years. And Dr. Modi wants to make it stop it, right? Mr. Modi, he wants to stop this. So how do we? So infection, human-based error. So we create a challenge, the integrated neonatal unit and integrated child health record. The issue is, Every child who goes premature and stays in the incubator generates six gigabyte of data per day. And six to eight to 12 weeks they stay. Imagine we are talking about the amount of data. Velocity and veracity both exist in this big data space. So that everything, and then there are machines which are connected to achieve this and you have all structured data, unstructured data, graphical data, all this had to be brought in together. So what we did, so you, out of 27 million, 5.5 in the hospital, we thought we can service at least 1 million to start with private corporate and move into government. And so what we did, we connected to all the machines into a box, captures the data, and taken it into a display for the uh, doctors and a mobile for the parents for the child's app, and it's in the cloud. This has been implemented today. At this moment, there are nine hospitals where NICU is operative, and 11 hospitals where the ICHR is operative. <clears throat> we have kept the cost, only 150 rupees per bed per day, when the hospital charges 4,000 rupees. And ICHR is only lifetime, $10 but it can be $2. G, out-competed. And that's why the <coughs> number of hospitals, now it's 11 plus hospitals, 100,000 plus babies data we have captured. We have, <coughs> and we received the Intel first prize, IBM first prize this year, I am Ahmedabad, and now we got this week the Korean prize. And the product within two years from the concept has reached the first Korean hospital with a Korean $1 million award is being implemented this week. So this is possible by our young Indians. And you can see the international experts, their reactions that we need longitudinal data. This is a fantastic how we can take decision. Nestle is interested because they want to know what baby food these children are taking which will make a difference for the children. So the last, latest experiment, I realized inclusive innovation and resource limiting condition, health for all to education for all is the future. So how do I use crowdsourcing? I was education commission chairman for Bengal. I saw brilliant kids in the rural. There is a midday meal, there is a books, free, everything, but there's no teacher. Teachers don't like to go to village just like doctors don't like to village. So how do I do this? So I came up with an idea, teacher on call. So I trust, I created a foundation, Sarge Part Knowledge Foundation. You can go to this website. The housewives, retired professors, retired professionals, whoever can speak Bengali, understand Bengali and can teach. The housewives in Bengal are very interesting. Once they have a baby, they teach them, and then they go to high school, and then they don't job. You know, Calcutta doesn't have that many jobs. They stay in Calcutta. So I trapped these resources, and first created a pilot project with my own money, with 20 schools and 500. It, February, this August, it was successful. The pilot worked. September, we rolled out. You know, actually, Geo helped me because when I started, calls started pouring because Geo was free. But the moment Geo became priced, my calls started dipping because I ran to the village schools and then I say, "What's happening?" They said, "20 rupees is too much." 
I put 20 rupees in a month. So you are reimbursing next month. It's difficult. I said, forget it. 1-800 is expensive. Let's make a call. I, the Education Commission report was made with the help of KPMG. So I have the KPMG person here. So I approached Calcutta, KPMG. Can your CSR help me? They said, yes, but it's a bureaucracy has to go all the way to Delhi and get it cleared. So I said, OK, I do consultancy. I'll increase my rate a little bit and put all my consultancy money. So I'll go ahead for one year and see how it goes. And you will be surprised today, 5,000 kids online, 2,000 calls per day, 40, 50 teachers attending to them. Uh, sorry, 2,000 to 3,000 calls per week, 40 teachers attending them, and now corporate people and others. I have so many young, you know, you'll be surprised. People not the biggest and richest. It is the people who are sympathetic. They're calling me, say, can I put some money? I get Twitter to say, can I become a teacher? So I spend two weeks in Calcutta. Every month now I go and spend, and this is my latest experiment. Can we give these young people a different life? And they are the lost Einstein. They are the lost Satin Bose, Meghnat Shah, and can we get them? So I'll be very happy if I'll stay through till lunchtime, I've requested. I want to listen to the young entrepreneurs. I hope my this talk will motivate some of the young people to go back and crowdsource who has spare time to dollar it. And I look forward, a companies, AIMA, will start requesting industries to spend two hours a week, volunteers who will help in maths, science, and English over phone to start with Bengal, maybe one day all over the India. So I thought, I came here to your request to use this forum to tell this story. Thank you.